Hey guys, it's CJ, long time no see. I hope you all have been doing great. I have um, just been very, very busy, a few life changes, but other than that, I have been extremely blessed and I hope you all have been the same. But we are here for one of my favorite shows, The Real Housewives of Potomac. Yes, they are back for season six and it looks like it is definitely gonna be a good one. But before we get started, you guys know as always to make sure that you like this video. Also subscribe to my channel, comment, let's talk about it. Uh, share, definitely tell a friend to tell a friend. You share it on your social media platforms, whatever, I greatly appreciate it. And with that out of the way, we will go ahead and get started. Now they titled this episode, The Nude Interlude, and we'll talk about why they titled that what they titled it in a minute but we start as always with the ladies starting to get ready you know for their confessionals and producers are kind of wanting to catch up with them to find out what's going on and we see the producers they ask candace to describe the season in one word and candace says that last season was toxic and they show us scenes from everything that went down between she and Monique and, you know, the fallouts, I guess, between her and Karen. But last season was definitely a doozy for Candace, to say the least. And Wendy says last year taught her that you never know who is plotting behind your back or who your real friends are. And then she also says that she she says to not to listen to them but watch them i guess those were her words of advice and they then go on to the tagline so we'll talk about what each lady used as this season's tagline we start with giselle and giselle says the secret to this pretty face is staying in the shade mia who is the newest cast member or the newest housewife of potomac says if you want to pop off I'll be happy to get you adjusted. Then we have Robin and Robin says, I may keep you waiting, but trust me, I'm worth it. Are you girl? Then we see Ashley and Ashley says, the only thing messier than two boys is me. Candace says, my blessings are many and my patience is none. And then we have Wendy. Wendy says, this professor doesn't just grade on the curve. She sets the curve. And then we have Karen and Karen says, the grand dame can never be duplicated, imitated or intimidated. So those are our season's taglines. Which one did y'all think was the best? Um, personally, I don't know. They were all kind of lame to me, but I mean, it is what it is. They were cute anyway. But anyway, the show opens, well, the first scene, I should say, with Wendy. And, and y'all know a few months ago or back during the pandemic, there was this craze, like the silhouette challenge that people were doing on TikTok where they would start, you know, um, I guess wearing normal clothes and then you go into like the doorway and it turns red and then your silhouette of you in some, you know, revealing or sexy clothing or none at all. Some people were really wilding out with this TikTok craze, but Wendy does this silhouette challenge and she attaches to it an invitation for the ladies. Um, and she calls this event the nude interlude. She wants the ladies to come and it's an all woman affair. And so she wants them to come because she's got some special guests that she wants to introduce them to. And Eddie is her biggest hype man. You know, he is happy to see what she's doing. And we learn behind the scenes that Wendy over the pandemic, she went and had a little work done. She got a breast augmentation and they ask her if she got any other work done and she says no but i think that wendy had like a bbl done a brazilian butt lift for those of you who don't know what that is 
And there is nothing wrong with that. I mean, she's a mom, she has three children. And as a mom, I know that children do change your body. Well, they change some of our bodies. Some people bounce back really fast, but a lot of us do not. And if I did have the money, I would get some work done too. Um, I'm definitely not above it. I am fairly active, but if I had a couple dollars to throw at a doctor for some work, trust me, I would be getting it done also. But anyway, you know, she wants to show them, she wants to reveal to them, you know, her new body or her new friends, so to speak. But we'll get into that, you know, later on down the line. We next see Robin and Juan, they're in the process of having their dream home or their new home built. And so far, so good. Everything looks really good. And they're pretty excited about that. Candace, you know, she's meeting with a contractor at her new home as well, because I guess she's wanting to have a little more work done in the, I guess the foyer or the living room area, which is huge by the way. I mean, the ceilings are gigantic. They have a really, really nice house. And we then go to Ashley, a very pregnant Ashley. Ashley's like nine months pregnant at this point. And we see Michael and Michael actually really seems to be enjoying fatherhood. He's playing with their son, um, their, their first son together. And she's pregnant with the second. And he really does seem to have you know a good bond with baby dean that's his name i forgot his name for a second and she says that you know since she didn't grow up with her dad that it's really nice to see michael being a good father to their child and that she feels like he will also be that same great father to the next one and you know she also brings up the fact that she has not had sex with michael in about four months and she can admit that at first she was very worried because she felt like this would cause Michael to stray again because we know that Michael does have a history of straying. But she says that they really, they seem to be in a really good place. And Michael says that he's looking forward to like their new normal, you know, with the new baby and everything and that he's, he's satisfied for the moment. And anyway, we go on to Giselle. Giselle goes to visit Candace and she is thoroughly impressed with Candace's new home. Like I said, it's a very, very nice home. And, you know, um, we see, we are introduced to, and I don't know if we've seen her in the past, I can't recall, but we are introduced to Chris's daughter, Naya, really pretty little girl. Um, I'm guessing, you know, she's from a previous relationship and we also see his son, um, Mateo and they're there visiting with the panty and everything going on. A lot of children are doing like the virtual learning. So they're able to kind of go about and not necessarily be in the classroom. So that allowed them to still get their education, but they can do it at their dad's house with their stepmom, Candace, which is really cool. So she's giving Giselle a tour of the home. She shows her like the guest bedroom, Miss Dorothy's or, or Dot, as they like to call her. And there's like this weird ass cutout in the, in the bedroom in the corner of Miss Dorothy. And I just thought that looked very, very strange, but so did Giselle, but you know, Candace says her mom loves it. This is her domain. And, you know, she is all about it. So that's their house. Anyway, um, Candace is kind of telling her, you know, that she's in her second semester of earning her master's degree. And we've seen on social media, we've seen Candace. Candace is like, she was talking, I think it was accounting. I don't know what class it was, but it was kicking her behind. And she was really like going through it. And she was letting us know on social media how rough that class was. I know I was not a fan of accounting um, at TSU for sure. Uh, so I definitely feel her pain. But 
Anyway, Candace sits down with Giselle. You know, Giselle is asking all the questions. So now it's Candace's turn. Candace wants to know, you know, how are things? How's family life? How are things with you and Jamal? How's the relationship? And Giselle tells her that it's not good. And she's just basically saying, you know, the pandemic and the distance is really causing a rift between them. Um, it's just too much pandemic at this point. And Candace isn't buying it. And Candace is just wondering, you know, if there was any truth to what Monique brought to the reunion last season and what, you know, Karen was saying, she's just kind of curious to know if that indeed was somewhat true or all the way true. And this has caused them to be in that not good space that Giselle says they're in. But she's... Candace lets us know that she is steering clear of Karen just because, you know, she's still in her feelings about how things went down between her when it came to Monique last season. And she's just not ready to be in that space with Karen at the moment. So she hasn't talked to her or anything. And from the looks of it, she doesn't really plan on it anytime soon. So then we go on to Karen and Ray. They're making plans for that 25th wedding anniversary that Ray brought up at the reunion and Ray you know he wants to kind of keep it simple he's not really into this large you know over the top grand event that we know that Karen is down to plan he wants to keep it simple because the pandemic is still going on and he doesn't want a large group of people. He knows that they're older and Karen's like, wait, 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 no, you're older, I'm not old. And so they kind of laugh about that. But she does say she only wants, you know, her close girlfriends there. And she feels like, you know, Giselle is not one of them at this point. And we both know that they, the beef between them it just runs deep and I don't know if it'll ever be resolved, but hopefully so, but I don't think it will. I mean, there's just too much water under the bridge for them to get back to where they originally were, in my opinion. But, you know, we see, like, we go kind of back and forth because we see Giselle still bashing Karen to Candace and then we see Karen bashing Giselle to Ray. Ray's kind of wanting them to bury the hatchet and get back, you know, cool. But Karen doesn't see it either. They're talking, they're both talking crazy about the other person's relationship. And this is kind of where I don't understand. Giselle is so big on how Karen has come for her family. But in a sense, she did the same thing, you know, a few seasons ago when she came for Ray when she was talking about the taxes and everything. I mean, it's, they're different entities, I guess. You got one talking more about a relationship and then you have the other one kind of talking more about financials, but y'all both came after the other's significant other in some way, shape or form to me. So it shouldn't be that big of a deal that they're making it, especially if a lot of what you know, both of y'all are saying is, is true or it was true. I don't really see what the big deal is and why, you know, we are still this upset about it. But anyway, we go on and we, we do see, um, Robin and Juan, they meet at this little smoothie spot because Robin wants to celebrate the great season that Juan had we know Juan's coaching basketball and she wanted to just take him out for smoothies to celebrate and plus Juan hasn't been out since the pandemic publicly as far as like going out to like a restaurant setting so I guess they're kind of trying to ease him into that and Juan was not taking that mask off and I don't blame him because I I admit you know with the guidelines if restaurants are practicing certain guidelines i am a little lax with like my mask but i was like Juan in the beginning 
I mean, and when I go in grocery stores and stuff, because I can't control how close somebody gets to me, I am wearing my mask like from the time I go in, from the time I leave. But in a restaurant, I am a little more lax just because we do have the space between us and I I just try to, I still do try to keep safe, you know, wash my hands and sanitize and all of that other good stuff. But they, Juan wasn't with it. Juan was like, I'm going to keep my mask on. And he probably kept it on in between sips of that smoothie. But they, you know, producers are kind of asking Robin about the wedding. And she blames you know, the panty, of course, and the fact that the kids are home, getting homeschooled. She blames that for the delay of their wedding, which, I mean, it makes sense to me because a lot of people's plans were dampened because of the pandemic. You know, a lot of weddings were put off unless you were like Cynthia Bailey from Housewives of Atlanta and was just like, I'm gonna have my wedding anyway. But a lot of people are playing it safe and they just want to kind of hold off on it until it's safe to do so. And I can't blame her or Juan for that. And from the looks of Juan, it definitely looks like he is not about to play with his life for a wedding. So they definitely are probably on pause and she's probably telling the truth. And then we see, you know, Juan is kind of telling Robin, you know, you are kind of falling into this lazy state, you know, you're in bed until afternoon, you know, the kids eating Chick-fil-A three times a week because you don't feel like cooking, you know, what's going on? I mean, you know, he, he doesn't like it. And the pandemic does have Robin in a bit of a funk. Like she said, you know, everything is different now. It's not the way that it used to be. And she finds herself getting overwhelmed and this causes her to shut down. Now, I know this new way of life has affected a lot of people in a lot of different ways. And it definitely was a change for me. And I do also feel myself kind of falling into a bit of a slump, um, you know, just personally. But, you know, luckily I have people to talk to about that kind of stuff. But it does, it does affect you and I can see, I can't afford to just lay in bed unfortunately because I got, you know, real bills that I gotta pay so I gotta get out and get it. But I do understand, you know, it could kinda have a different effect on people. You know, it could affect you differently. And one, they start talking about, you know, the possibility of having other children. Juan tells her that he, does want a little girl or girls uh um he said that would just be like the icing on the cake you know they already got their two boys and he feels like a little girl would really kind of seal the deal robin says you know she knows that the little girl would be oh so cute and all this but she's like look i'm not in the mental state to take care of the ones we got i know i can't bring another one into this world so she is kind of not feeling it but then anyway, we go back to Candace and Chris and we see Candace in this new state. You know, we see her in stepmommy mode. We've never seen this from her before. And it's refreshing and it's really cool to see because she seems like she's doing a really, really good job. I guess the little girl was probably a little harder to crack than Mateo. She says, you know, Mateo is very sweet and welcoming and he kind of made this process a lot easier for her. I guess the little girl probably gave her a little bit of hell. Um, and kids can, can be that way when somebody new is introduced to the situation. But she is really getting the hang of it. And, and it's a really good look for her. And eventually they talk and she says that, you know, there is a possibility that she could want children of her own, you know, with Chris in the future and i'd be glad when they go ahead and do it but we i can't put a time frame on nobody's ovaries but i mean they just keep dangling this idea over our heads that she may want children or she may not want children but they'll do it in their own time of course 
So then we see, you know, it's the night of the event, the nude interlude. And Wendy's got like these titty cupcakes that she was feeding the kids and they're so innocent. And luckily they did not know what they were eating, but they knew that they taste good. That's all they knew. And the lady starts showing up. Giselle arrives first and Robin arrives next. And they kind of sneak around to look at the place, you know, the table setting, the place settings of the cards and everything to see who's sitting where. And they see a new name, Mia. And they're wondering, okay, well, who is Mia? And Robin doesn't know who Mia is. Giselle doesn't know who she is. So they'll definitely ask when they get the opportunity. And, you know, Karen, she's on the way with Mia. And we learned that Mia is actually one of Karen's girlfriends. And Mia is described as this boss chick, you know, by uh, Wendy, by Karen. And she owns the joint, the joint chiropractic um, clinics. And I don't know, I think I've seen one of those here where I live. And they are definitely um, you know, places, you know, up and down the East Coast. And she does seem to you know, be doing very well for herself. And we see Wendy, you know, and Karen, they show like this scene where the two of them kind of buried the hatchet at one point. I'm sure we missed a lot because I know, you know, production was done a little differently um, these days just due to the pandemic and everything. So we see them sitting down and they're talking and it looks like they agreed to start over to reset to bury you know the hatchet so this will be kind of interesting to see them actually getting along i would definitely like to see that i wanted to see it last season but they just i mean i don't know what karen came in a little hot when it came to wendy and it they just never got off to the start that i would have liked to see them get off to but it looks like they're definitely gonna do something good this season so we'll see and Ashley makes it and a very pregnant Ashley again you know she shows up in her snow boots and her cute little fitted dress and she tries to change into some heels but it's like look Ashley that is not necessary they know you are ready to pop at any moment so be comfortable you ain't even gotta wear any shoes as far as we're concerned but they learned that Candace is not coming because Candace is sick. And we saw a scene, I guess Candace had diarrhea or something was going on, but she was in the bathroom and she said it would not stop coming out. I don't know what it was, but did she really want to come? That's the question. And probably not. But anyway, you know, they asked Wendy who Mia is and Wendy just lets them know that she's Karen's friend and then we see Giselle kind of throw a little shade like well yeah Karen definitely needs a friend and Wendy was just kind of like Giselle you know she kind of like cut it short I guess she didn't really want you know shots being fired she didn't want the drama to rear up but we know this group of ladies the drama is definitely coming so Giselle it's kind of mad because when Karen comes in, she expected Karen to greet her at the door with an apology right away for coming for her family. But Karen kind of paid her dust and didn't really acknowledge her. And so she was certainly in her feelings about that. And they want to know, you know, who's the new lady? They want to know about Mia. She tells them a little bit about herself, about her owning, you know, the clinics and how her husband is 38 years older than she is and how they have grandchildren and this that and the third and so it was kind of like a little bit of phaedra math going on because she couldn't figure out they wanted they wanted to know okay well if your husband is 38 years older than you and you say he's 68 that makes you 30 now, obviously, this lady does not look 30 years old. She looks very, very good, but she definitely did not look 30. So there, she was like, no, 
I'm not 30. And anyway, they come to the conclusion that she's 32, I think. I don't know. And he's only 60. 60. I'll, see, they got my math messed up. But anyway, I guess she was only 30. There is a, There's a 32 year age difference between the two of them. And I think she was 36. Yeah, we're going to say she was 36. All right. So then, you know, they're sitting there and they're talking and she wants to know because Wendy reveals Happy and Ness and that's what she named her Tatas. And so everybody was like, oh my God, I know you did not bring us all the way out here to show us some titties, you know? So Robin was like, she better show some butt too. She better show us her booty too, because we know last season she ain't had no booty in this season, you know, something a little pokey back there. So it was funny. And she, I guess she kind of felt like Mia was coming after her because Mia wanted to know, well, what else did you have done? And Wendy was like, you know, I had some tweaking done, um, but what all have you had done? And Mia wasn't ashamed. Mia let her know I had Botox. I get Botox um, four times a month or once every four months or something, some fillers. I had a um, ab something. I mean, she went down the line. She even said she had a coochie work done. And everybody was just kind of like, oh my God, how, you know, why? And so she just let them know after you have children, it changes the, you know, the look of your private part. And I had it worked on. And so they were just like, no, nah, that mean it's just been blew out or, you know, whatever. It was just, it was funny. It was just some shade about the woman's cooch. But anyway, you know, she didn't have no shame in her game with telling them what was what about her and they you know karen wants to know where candace is because she was kind of looking forward to seeing her she just kind of wanted to feel her out a little bit kind of test the temperature to see you know how candace felt about her and they just let her know candace wasn't feeling well and she wasn't coming and robin just flat out said i honestly think she didn't want to see you and Candace, I mean, and Karen, you know, she could understand that. She accepted that. And somehow they started, that started like um, an argument between Giselle and Karen. They just started going off on one another. It became like the battle of the, um, the WAP versus the dry box. You know, Karen accused Giselle of having like a fiery box. That's why jamal didn't want to be with her or something and she was like at least his parts work and so karen was like yeah they work in other vaginas but except for yours it was just like wild like they started talking about each other's coochies it was just a hot mess these two old women are at this table hollering about wops and dry boxes and i know they are both 50 plus and this is just not the best look but Anyway, the ladies, you know, they did not interject. They just kind of let them go back and forth. And that's kind of where the episode ended. And then we saw like the previews for the season or little bits of scenes. And it definitely seems like it's going to be action packed. I don't know if there will be a physical fight, but there's definitely going to be food thrown between Mia and Candace. So we'll see what happens. But this review is kind of long, I guess, just because this was a longer episode and it was just the opening um, season, uh, the season opener. Um, like I said, we can talk about it in the comments below. If I left out anything, I don't think I left out anything. I think I went play for play. But if y'all want to talk about it, like I said, let's do it in the comments below. Again, don't forget to like this video, subscribe, um, share, share, share. And I will see you guys in the next one. Y'all have a great week. Peace.